I would now like to invite our next speaker, Professor Bogomil Kaminsky. Professor Kaminsky is a researcher in the fields of operations research and computational social science. For development work, he uses the Julia language. As of now, he mostly contributes to the dataframes.jl package and related packages. In today's talk, Professor Kaminsky will discuss the state of, of dataframes.jl, what has recently changed in dataframes.jl, what is the current state of the package, and what are the future plans. We have 15 minutes scheduled for this talk, including questions. So if you could leave about three to five minutes for questions, that would be ideal. The audience can ask questions on Discord, and we will keep a track of those. Over to you, Professor Kaminsky. Thank you very much. Uh, I am very glad to be invited to give this talk, and I will present it on behalf of the Julia Data Organization. So uh, let me first uh, address a general uh, question. What is DataFrames.jl and how does it fit to data scientists' uh, workflow? Uh, so uh, let, let me start with Julia Data. So Julia Data is an organization that is uh, managing multiple packages that provide tools for data manipulation and data storage and retrieval for Julia. And DataFrames.jl is one of the core packages uh, in this ecosystem that is designed for working with tabular data in memory. And what is important, it currently provides all standard functionalities that you would normally expect, like mutation of data frames, so adding columns, changing uh, data in data frames, subsetting, joining, sorting, reshaping white to uh, long, long to wide, aggregation, transformation of data frames, and fast lookups. Uh, what is a distinguishing feature of data frames, JL, is that uh, because there are many ecosystems for working with tabular data, both in Julia and outside of Julia, I think when I had to decide on one thing that I would like to highlight is that it was designed with production use in mind. It means that we design data frames in a way that you can, when you write code using data frames JL, you can safely run it without the uh, developer looking at what it's uh, doing. So first of all, uh, we have a safety first principle, which means that in general, operations in data frames JL should be safe, but you can opt in for high performance uh, operations if you want and you know what you are doing. The second thing is that we concentrate on developer productivity so that uh, it should be possible to express complex things in a quite concise way. Uh, as another thing uh, related to this production use is in mind is something that was coined, I think, first by Milan, or at least I learned it from Milan, uh, no warning principle, which means in data frames, either something works or errors. And it is, I think, crucial for production pipelines, because uh, if you print warnings, uh, then most of the time it's not useful if no one uh, can see uh, warnings. Also, because we want to be production ready, we really invest a lot of time in ensuring that our tests cover all provided functionalities in depth. And finally, in order for any package to be production uh, ready, uh, we need to guarantee that if there is a bug, we fix it. So I call it no open bugs policy. So if I I constantly and also other members of Julia Data monitor Data Frames JL. In, if there any any bug is reported, uh, I think that uh, no significant bug was open for more than one week, and usually faster we make a release uh, fixing it, which I think is quite important for production use. Uh, so, uh, what are the other key features of Data Frames JL that distinguish it? So, first of all, it has a flexible schema, and this is uh, related to the fact that we want Data Frames to be easily mutable, uh, which also means that we have 
optional in-place operations for fast uh, mutation of data frames. But in general, data frames, JL can store any type of data. And this is something that users often report as very useful. We can store matrices, images, whatever you think you need, you can store and if it's tabular data, we can store it. On the other hand, we are very careful to be fully consistent with Julia base design, which means that if something works in Julia base, you can expect that it will work the same way in data frames JL. Finally, uh, mm, we put a lot of effort to ensure that we have good documentation. So it's not only that the functionality is documented, but we put a lot of effort in creating curated tutorials. And here you have a link uh, so you, you can uh, look up this presentation uh, on uh, JuliaCon website and uh, uh, find those tutorials. Also, we have translation guides from other ecosystems. And finally, uh, if there is any question uh, related to data frames, you really care to open, oh, answer it fast. And I would say that uh, one day to answer any questions is something that we usually guarantee. Here, I would like to thank uh, several organizations like Julia Lab at MIT, Julia Computing, Pumas AI, because at different stages of development of this package, we got a lot of help for them. And finally, I would like to stress that DataFrames JL is actively developed and maintained, which again is important, I think, for production use. So uh, what has changed since last year? Uh, uh, during last conference, we have asked users questions what they want to be implemented during the coming year in data frames JL. And here are the answers. Uh, as you can see, we managed to do most of the things. Some of the things are planned or pending, but uh, in general, I believe that uh, the joint effort of Julia Data allowed us to mature the package uh, to, to the stage where we were able to make a 1.0 release. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, long-term uh, stability of the API. And uh, I often uh, get a question, how did we go past 1.0 release? And uh, <laughs> my short answer is that there are two principles. One principle I call Stefan principle and the other is Milan principle. So Stefan principle says, if you are unsure what to do, make it undefined. And Milan principle is, if you are unsure what to do, make it an error. Uh, and this is essentially what we did. So anything that was uh, hard to finalize by 1.0 release, either errors or is defined as undefined. And uh, therefore, we can freely fix uh, those uh, remaining things after 1.0 release. So the other important thing is that we have finalized the mini language for defining transformations and more on it in a second and significantly reduced latency. And also I will show more on it in a second. And finally, bug fixes in performance improvements. And in general, the whole ecosystem has matured a lot, which is also thanks to many new contributors uh, we have. So let me comment a bit on uh, performance. So this plot shows you how the performance of uh, group split apply combined um, has uh, evolved over the last two years. And so you can see the y-axis is log. So actually, this shows you that we constantly are faster and faster, maybe not super that much faster, but we improve our performance. Uh, but what I think is more spe spectacular is how we manage to improve the performance of joints. So as you can see, again, this is log axis. So it is like order currently joints are order of magnitude faster than, than there were uh, even half a year ago. Uh, actually, uh, yesterday there was a presentation uh, mm, of uh, Julia core team when performance of joints uh, also was, was shown and I got questions. C 
can we be even faster? And in order to answer it, uh, I have made a, a short blog post today to show you how already today you can make your joints much faster uh, with data frames. Uh, and hopefully in a uh, few weeks, this will be something that will be also reflected on uh, official benchmarks in the H2O website. Uh, uh, so going back to compilation latency, um, the compilation latency is something that is really important for data frame JL. Why? Because many operations uh, take custom uh, um, transformations. Moreover, data frames is type unstable on purpose because we want our schema to be uh, flexible and here all the work from uh, Tim Holly and other people who cooperate with them helped us a lot. And uh, in short, uh, I of course this is a very complex topic, but uh, I can summarize it in two patterns. So one is type fixing pattern, the other is type hiding pattern that help us with compila compilation uh, latency a lot. So here you have a chain of functions. And usually most of them do not do so much work. They are either pre or post processing. And you have one single function that is really expensive. So what is type fixing pattern? Well, type fixing pattern is that you make sure that the functions before your expensive operation and do not have a high di diversity of types. So you try to very fast pinpoint the own ideally one type that will be passed through to your expensive function. And type hiding pattern is a bit different. So uh, your, uh, your type can be diverse, but you wrap it uh, in, uh, in, a, in another type that makes it type unstable. So only when you hit the fn function, this expensive one, you actually have to compile it. The other thing is that we have concentrated on production use, but of course we do not forget of interactive use. And actually the mini language we have developed, so source transformation target uh, mini language, uh, first of all can express uh, any transformation and make sure that this expensive function here in the middle can be run very fast. But on the other hand, it also enables supporting uh, packages like data frames meta and data frame macros to uh, provide a much nicer DSLs for interactive work. So here you have a, on top, uh, there is a data frames uh, code and on uh, bottom you have the same code, uh, in this case using data frame macros, which is uh, much, much nicer and essentially what data frame macros does, it re rewrites this lower code into this roughly this um, upper code. So the other thing is the ecosystem, uh, which uh, is really important because without the ecosystem, you know, only having tabular data would not be uh, so useful. And um, I tried to show how this ecosystem could be used together to do data science projects. And uh, during the workshops, during the workshop I have given uh, at this conference. Uh, and finally, we are not stopping here. We have a lot of plans for, for both improving usability and also uh, improving uh, the performance, especially more multi-threading support, out-of-core processing of data, GPU support, uh, and similar. Before uh, I finish to let you uh, ask some questions, let me just thank for all the support of people who contributed to Data Frames JL, because as you can see, on this slide, we have 177 contributors. So people who actually opened uh, a PR and this PR was merged into data frames and uh, it's over 2,500 2, commits to the package. Uh, so really I would like everyone who contributed uh, to the package to thank. 
and uh, all this work is uh, it's really rewarding when we see like today in the Julia uh, language survey that uh, um, data frames JL was quite highly voted as a liked package and it's really making us want to more even more on it so thank you very much and my I will happily take your questions Thank you, Professor Kaminsky, for sharing the developments in dataframes.jl. Unfortunately, we will not be able to take live questions for this talk due to our time constraints. Our apologies, Professor Kaminsky. We request the audience to get in touch with Professor Kaminsky on Discord.